Selsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Welcome, uh, both participants that are here at the school in our green oasis, and also the participants online. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're here at Malmö Folkhögskola, and uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about what uh, Folkhögskola is, but also uh, I'm going to start with uh, who we are, who is Monmouth Folkhögskola? Skula. First of all, uh, we need to translate. Uh, it's kind of difficult to translate because this is a special education form, but the closest translation I could find was uh, Adult Education College or Monmouth Folk High School uh, in Swedish, Folkhögskola. We uh, have opened our school or established our school in 1991, and we're around 20 or so pedagogues and uh, people on staff in total here. The average class size is about 15 to 20 people. And uh, all the participants, or um, maybe what you call them students, uh, are 18 and older. Depends on which course you study here at the school, but um, courses can be anywhere from a few months to even up to three years. What do we offer? Uh, we offer a variety of courses and um, here are some photos from our classrooms and our courses. Uh, the most typical course that people apply to is the general course. And the general course is something that you would apply to to get your high school diploma. Um, you would get your English credits, your mathematics, religion, biology, and so on and so forth. Uh, in our school, you can also study a specialized course. And some of these specialized courses include uh, Boost Your Creativity with Emma, so an arts course. We also have Game Design. They are on the bottom right there in the photo. And we have Creative Writing and uh, more of a vocational course called Elder Care. So you become a certified elder care assistant. Last but not least, uh, we also have special projects that we work with uh, from OPC and ESF. Um, and other local associations. And many of the students that have applied here have chosen to apply specifically at our school, even though there are many folk high schools around, because we are a dyslexia and dyscalculia center. So uh, a lot of applicants seek to our school or try to apply here because they need a little bit of extra help. And uh, we have uh, actually all pedagogues have an education in dyslexia and dyscalculia. So we're able to meet our students' need in a, this different way. Um, we also have a special pedagogue on uh, full-time staff. In fact, he's sitting right there in the back. Hi, Jorgen. Uh, and all course material is available digitally. Uh, we know that digitalization is quite widespread at this point. So um, most schools are able to meet the needs of dyslexic students. Uh, however, having dyscalculia is a little bit uh, requiring a bit more of a special support. So we're able to also meet that need as well. Questions so far? No? But what is even folk high school? You know a little bit now about our school, but Folk High School is a type of adult education institution that has existed in Sweden and other Nordic countries. Um, it's a form of education that has existed for 150 years. And it's specifically the methodology that sets the Folk High School apart from other forms of education. I'm gonna explain that a little bit later, but just uh, give a bit of an overview. And we have a bit more of an informal and flexible approach to learning compared to traditional schools, uh, where the uh, focus is more on peer-to-peer -peer learning and student inclusion. Uh, this is a bit special, but we don't actually have so many uh, assessments. We don't have, for example, tests. And as someone that has been to both high school and university and college myself, uh, this is quite unusual and uh, removes some of the stress that we experience. And we find other ways to assess students' knowledge and, and development. Uh, and there's more of an emphasis, emphasis uh, in the classroom on democratic values, on community involvement, and lifelong learning. Um, we are one school here in Malmö Folkhögskola, is one school in Skåne. 
but there are actually 19 of uh, folk high schools in Skåne, this area right here, this region. In the rest of the country, or in total, we are 156 folk high schools in all of Sweden. And initially, uh, folk high schools started in more rural areas. Now I know we feel kind of rural when this green oasis, uh, but we're actually uh, quite uh, in the city here. But most high, uh, folk high schools started in rural areas. And currently, 50% uh, of all folk high schools uh, allow or have, uh, I guess you could call them boarding facilities. You can stay there. Uh, you live there full time on campus. Uh, here are participants, or as you'd call them students, they go home for the day. But in many, like I said, 50% of folk high schools, uh, many have lodging there and food as well at their school. Questions so far? Is it a public school or is it a private school? Uh, it's public school. Public. Yeah, anyone can apply that's 18 or over. Okay. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the funding a little bit later. And then we also have a principal here that can help answer some more questions. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I'll put that in the parking lot, as we yeah. say. Um, so who applies at the school? We know it's adults, 18 plus. Uh, but there's different kinds of groups of students and participants that apply here. And it's often adults that are trying to get back mm. on the horse, so to speak, or back into studying again. So they're trying to finish their high school diploma and find a way to further their education, possibly go on to vocational school or university. Uh, there are also some uh, that are actually uh, applying here and experiencing their first um, inclusion or their first experience, having their first experience in more like a Swedish society. So it might be their first real interaction with Swedish society. And we also have, I mentioned our, uh, I mentioned our arts course, Boost Your Creativity. I also mentioned the gaming course that we have, the game design. Uh, there are many different art courses that you can take in different folk high schools. But um, that means that there are many artists that are aspiring creators that are trying to hone their skills and build a network uh, of other artists together. So they might also be applying. So we have quite a varied range of people that are applying at the schools. Uh, what sets the folk high school apart from traditional education? Uh, what we want to do is we want to allow the participants or the students to uh, use their, well, their individual experiences in life uh, and share them in a pursuit of knowledge. So what we're trying to do is, uh, first of all, we, uh, I grew up saying teacher and student. At the school, we are pedagogues and participants and not teachers and students. So the students are participating in the knowledge and they are also creating new knowledge together. Um, there are no tests, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in most courses. There are uh, no, in general, there are no course books or textbooks. So um, the, you can say that uh, also that the curriculum is set with the students. So each time a new group of students or participants comes into the classroom, we create a curriculum together. Um, and uh, it's, as I mentioned earlier, uh, building course content and discussion based on the experiences of participants in the classroom is really central. At the end of your studies here, it might, uh, gener I'm speaking more or less general courses, right? The ones that give you your high school diploma, uh, math, English, religion, and so on and so forth. At the end of your studies, you will get a pass or fail for the credits, the individual credits, like did you pass or fail the English course? Um, so with those um, past credits that you get, you can apply to university or other schools, but you also get a number between one and four that talks about or represents your general progress um, studying here. So it's one number and it can represent your three years studying here and how much progress and development you have made. And that can be that number can be used as a merit towards further studies, but also the course credits will be used as a merit for further studies. Uh, I'm being a little bit redundant again, but high school credits uh, are given. So English, math, religion, biology, and et cetera. And those are for the general courses. Why is folk high school important? Uh, it, 
because it's so much participation with the particip like with everyone in the classroom and we're sharing knowledge and learning from each other, uh, we're able to strengthen democracy and um, create participative involvement in societal development. Uh, there are a lot of participants and a lot of courses where people work together with organizations, uh, for example, and right now we're working a lot with the EU. For, ex for example, we had the EU project come in here on Wednesday and talk about uh, why voting is so important. Um, I also mentioned earlier that there's a wide array of different kinds of people that apply at the school. And because of this, we're able to bridge educational gaps and raise that, in general, the educational level for marginalized groups, for folks that uh, had a little bit of a tough time getting through high school or maybe decided uh, they had to do other priorities that they had to take care of. And now they're getting a second chance to get back into education. Amongst other things, of course, we develop their skills and they develop their own skills and they build networks and gain knowledge. Government funding, you were talking about this. Um, we are trying to um, make sure that we meet the objectives of the financial contribution. So the government funds and helps us, um, but they are expecting us to make sure that we are helping strengthen democracy. So these are their goals with the funding. Uh, they make sure it's possible for people to influence their life situation and create participative involvement in societal development. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's very important um, from the government's perspective as well, not just from folk high schools, but to bridge ed educational gaps and raise the level of education and cultural awareness in society. And last but not least, uh, the government is helping us um, by making sure that the financial contribution goes to broadening the interests for the uh, for an increased participation in cultural life. Mm -hmm. There are uh, 156 folk high schools, as I mentioned earlier, and most of them are run by organizations, associations, and societies. And uh, the remaining 42 are run by county city councils and regions. For example, our school board consists of the Workers' Educational Association, or ABF, the Swedish Trade Union Confederation, or the LO, and the Hyresgästföreningar, or the Tenants Association. So those are the people on our board. Selfsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Pavia, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.